Hi, it's Leslie with Art Insights and I am with Ruben Aquino and uh, thank you for letting me interview you. He's working on Princess and the Frog and also worked on The Little Mermaid. I worked on Ursula the Sea Witch. Yes, who is so over the top in the most wonderful way. Um, and who are you working on with Princess and the Frog? Uh, I'm doing two characters. I'm doing the parents, um, Mom and Dad, Eudora and James. Oh, wonderful! And of of of, the, of Tiana, the main character. Okay, and uh, who are the voices of those? Uh, Oprah Winfrey is the uh, voice of the mom uh -huh. of Eudora, and uh, Terrence Howard is the voice of uh, Dad. So it's James. really almost impossible to have two more well-known and well-regarded actors as the voices for your characters. That's kind of wonderful. Yeah. It's like, did you're the supervising animator? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh. A supervising animator. Uh, gets involved early on in the um, design of the characters. We usually have a character des uh, designer for the production. Mm -hmm. For the and whole production? For the whole production. Okay. All the uh, characters are uh, done, uh, designed, uh, there's an initial cast by the character designer working with the directors. The supervising animators for each of the characters will get together and um, take those initial designs and try to develop them and get closer to a final model for each character. So I'm involved in getting the uh, final model sheets for the characters. Okay. The uh, supervising animators also get involved with experimental animation. So with James and Eudora, I did some early scenes. Mm -hmm. um, the designs are actually a little bit different from what they wound up being. Oh, um, cool! So, but How did you know, they that's change? why we do the test scenes so we can see what they look like. And um, Eudora was actually pretty close to Bill Schwab's original designs, but my original design for um, James is very different from what. It wound up doing, and Bill actually did a later design that was closer to the final, which is what I used. <clears throat> and then, so when you got the the designs from the production, the character designer, mm -hmm. you did you already? W at what point did you get selected as the person who was the supervising animator for those two characters? Um, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's there's all the animators kind of express an interest in the character. Yeah. Uh, usually, I just. I'm pretty flexible. I like doing all kinds of different characters. You do characters. do all kinds of characters. Yes. Now, some people prefer to do the, the girl ones, or right, right, the right. villain right. or the comic cartoony characters. Mm -hmm. But I like doing so them all. So that would be Andreas, Mark, <laughs> and Eric. Okay. <laughs> so, you yeah. Know the, you know the animators. I know the animators. Yeah. Um, and you just like to sort of fill in, mm -hmm. to sort of bring up the... the the pizzazz of some of the characters. Yeah. List some of the um, some of the, the characters that you've worked on as a surprising um, animator. Uh, besides Ursula, I've yeah. done Adult Simba right. in Lion King. Uh, I've done Maurice, the dad. All wacky, different Wacky, crazy old yes. Maurice and Beauty and the Beast. I've done Captain Shang in uh, oh, Mulan. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Chief Powhatan. Oh, Pocahontas. also lovely. Uh, Pleakley, the one-eyed crazy alien from Lilo and Stitch. Oh, okay. And in the same movie I did David, the surfer dude. Oh, cool. So those are two very different Very characters. different, yeah. uh-huh. Okay, so there have been like little movies you were just off doing something else or? Yeah, I was actually during Aladdin, I was uh, one of the first animators on Lion King. What would you say of all of the characters that you've worked on taught you the most? Hmm, interesting. I, I learn a lot on each of the characters, so it's right. hard to say. But you know, uh, sometimes, I, it, just as like a, you're as an artist, mm -hmm. um, I think it's. I was talking um, with Mark about the fact that it's a very different kind of of artist because there's so many different traits that are required right. to be an animator. Right. That you know, obviously you're an artist, but there's all these other qualities: mm -hmm. the, the patience and the mathematical brain mm -hmm. and the sense of humor and all these other things. But um, you you have so many different kinds of characters. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe one of them was more of a stretch for you just because you are so willing to take so many different kinds of characters right. on. Well, Ursula, I love, I love talking about Ursula because she, I had the most fun doing She's her. She's very she flamboyant compared to the rest of your characters. Yeah. You have um, some, you I, listed some characters who are pretty um, staid and... Mm -hmm. And, and I learned from that too, for instance, uh, Chief Powhatan mm -hmm. and Captain Shank mm -hmm. were both very subtle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, both kind of straight, you know, realistic. Uh -huh. uh, Different in other ways, you know. Chief Powhatan was more uh, reserved, uh, statesman, you know, father type. And Captain he had Shang a, a, was more in your face and, you know, very manly. You know. The chief had a um, a, um, a 
very few movements. He was very mm -hmm. kind of, um, you, you consolidated the amount of movement that he made and mm -hmm. still um, created a lot of emotional mm -hmm. um, truth in the character oh, at the same time. That had to be really hard to do. And it's interesting mm -hmm. as a foil to Ursula. Yeah, um, well, because uh, um, she was part octopus and part human, I had to do a lot of research on octopi. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. Octopi. <laughs> Octopi. And um, Roy Disney was really um, keeping an eye on us and it's, particularly he was interested in Ursula making sure uh, she was convincing as half octopus because he did a film, um, I think it was in the 60s, called um, uh, Mysteries of the Deep. Oh, okay. Where mm -hmm. there are a lot of underwater creatures. Right, so right, he was right. very interested in that kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> so we had to make sure he was Oh, well, but, uh, it's good but, to make him yeah, happy anyway. Plus, I wanted to make sure the audience bought it, you know. That right. This so it's creature like a, is half human and half octopus. And, well, so it's a, an animal character and a human character mm -hmm. mixed together. And right. That you don't and, see that a lot. Mm -hmm. They did on Hercules. And it actually worked out because it was underwater, so all the movements were kind of slow and overlapping. Slowing. Uh, even though she could move quickly. And kind of creepy. Moved, yeah. In a good way. Mm -hmm. Well, in a very interesting way, you know, she could use all of the different aspects of her tentacles, mm -hmm. I felt like it was right. beautiful. So it wasn't just it. a person walking on the ocean bottom, but it was a person, you know, walking with the undulating movements of an octopus. Mm -hmm. Very creepy, with the tentacles, you know. And you used and it to, to, study to, to all make the her character, mm -hmm. to build your character together. Right. And so that one was really fun to do. And mm -hmm. um, what about right now? What you're working on uh, in Princess and the Frog? What if, tell tell me about the difference when you were doing James. Okay, what, James is more in line with uh, Shang and probably most like Chief Powhatan. Mm -hmm. Both were fathers. Uh, I've done a father before with Maurice, but he was very different. He was mm -hmm. cartoony and silly and wacky. Mm -hmm. um, Powhatan and James are both more um, reserved. straight, reserved. Mm -hmm. Uh, and definitely with, with James, I want him to be very warm and um, you could, with all the fathers I do, you want, and especially if they're relating to the daughter, um, you want to feel that there's a love between the two of them and that's, to me, has always been an important um, thing kind of to the convince the, the audience. the pin. Exactly, <laughs> it's, it, because it motivates the main, the character, the daughter, uh, throughout the rest of the story. Same with Belle and Maurice. You had to buy the bell, loved her wacky little dad yeah, so much that, that she would stuff. be willing to sacrifice herself exactly. and stay at the beast castle to save him. Right. Uh, so it's kind of a major part of the storyline. Exactly. And is that not to give away anything? But that mm -hmm. there's their their relationship between James and Tiana and is a pretty important part absolutely, of the storyline. Yeah. So you had to buy that she wanted so much to uh, not to give anything away, right? But to fulfill his dream. That, well, uh, that's everybody's child right. story, you know, is, is how your family mm -hmm. and your upbringing influences the decisions and the choices you make. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to, as everyone knows, especially people inside here, to the depth of Disney animation, mm -hmm. especially the feature films. It's They say, especially with John Lasseter in charge and, mm -hmm. and Ron and John running mm -hmm. this particular um, movie, um, is to make it a live action movie, but it just happens to be animated. So the storyline is as important, the storyline and how it unfolds, and the depth of meaning in the story is as important uh, in, mm -hmm. in, a, in an animation feature.